We've been in this series and we asked this question. What identifies a follower of Jesus, right? Uh, I mean, different traditions in different places have taken and made it, you, you've got to behave like us, you've got to dress like us, you've got to look like us. And, and they've said, you're, you're a follower if you do these activities or not these activities. And it's 5% true because in scripture it says, hey, a Christian, someone who has Jesus in their heart, grows to be this kind of a person. And ch- these things change in them. And, and this, this work of God happens in them that makes them completely different. And we said, well, the one thing we do know from looking out at you and understanding us and reading the Bible where it says we all have different gifts is it, it doesn't make us uniform. We're going to have different likes and different dislikes and, and we're going to be different people and have different gifts, but it gives us a unity, not a uniformity. It says that we'll be known by our love for one another, our love for God, the place he has in our life, and then the grace with which we work that out it with each other. That there's these clear markers that it just calls to serve one another and be gentle with one another and encourage one another. And that, that we will stand out in the world as followers of Jesus. They'll be able to clearly say, those people, there's something different about them. And we can say it's because of who Jesus is and because of what he did. We know that the Bible's clear that there are some regular things that Jesus did. And so if we're following him, as the Bible calls us to do, um, we look to develop some of those things within us. And like Chris did an amazing job last week talking about hospitality. And we've just talked about a whole bunch of different things. They're all on our YouTube channel. You can go check them out. We wanted to end the series with this, fun and fellowship. Now, how many of you, when you think about followers of Jesus, immediately think about the funnest people that you know? Uh, so we had a few hands. Hey? At home, you guys are just laughing because you know you can't be busted for that. Um, it's interesting that sometimes, it, because there are so many hard things in the world and because faith is a serious issue and talk, we sometimes lean away from the reality that followers of Jesus should live with a level of fun, fellowship, and freedom that the rest of the world doesn't even understand. And so I just want to quickly run through uh, where we find some of that in Scripture. First, I want you to know that you were created to have laughter and joy. Part of how you were created was that this was to be a part of your life and a healthy part of your life. Ecclesiastes 3, 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Romans 12, 15, it says we're to rejoice with those who rejoice, celebrate and have a great time, but we're also to weep with those who weep. We know the Bible tells us we were made in the image and likeness of God himself. Genesis 1, 27 fills us in. It says, so God created man in his own image, In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So you were created by God, and he gave you this unique capacity. In fact, it's a reflection of him. Do you know that the psalmist David talks about this lots, and I I don't have time to take a big side trail, but lots of the times when he talks about God laughing, he's laughing about people on earth and what they're going to do or what's going to happen to them or And and not in an evil way, but God laughs. It says in Psalm 2, he who sits in the heavens laughs. In Psalm 37, 13, but the Lord laughs at the wicked. Psalm 59, 8, but you, O Lord, laugh at them. And so we're made in the image and likeness of God, and God is someone who laughs. Secondly, I want you to know this about Jesus. He was a fun person. How many of you know Jesus went to parties? Two of you knew that. I mean, the scripture's full of it where, you know, his first miracle, right? He's, he's at a wedding, and the, the feast is going on, and, and all of the wine is gone, and there's no more wine for the guests. And his first miracle is turning water into wine so that the celebration, the party, continues, and it's, and it's enjoyable. We see Jesus going to different things. And in Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, listen to what it says. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. 
yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. I mean, the accusation they had against Jesus is you hung out with the wrong people, you ate with them, you were invited, they invited you to their parties, they wanted to be around you. And Jesus had a real sense of humor. This one stands out for me, but if you go through and read, and again, I don't have a lot of time today to unpack a whole, some different ones, but th- this is one I really love. Set the scene for you. The disciples have had a very, very busy time. The death of John the Baptist has just happened. Jesus said, you guys are all tired. Let's get away together. And in Mark, he's calling them away, and the crowds find out where they're going and follow them and show up, right? And Jesus has compassion on them, and he teaches, and, and there's these old grumpy moment where feeding the 5,000, uh, where the disciples are like, yeah, sure, we'll just go buy you some food. And Jesus says, you guys row back across. I'm going to be alone for a while. And as they take off, they're getting a storm, and they're not making much headway. And Jesus has been watching them struggle and not make headway. And he walks out, and listen to what it says here. And he saw they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. And, and I anticipate him going, I'm faster than you are, boys. <laughs> Having fun yet? And if you read the Bible carefully and you see Jesus' interactions, you know he was fun and he was funny and he was, had a sense of humor. He was sought out as a guest. And if you read through, you see people coming to him and asking him to come and eat with me, come and talk with me. He was invited to feasts and to parties And here were the qualities that I identified that drew people in. Think about this for a minute. First, you saw Jesus treat everyone with value. It didn't matter what tribe they were from, what their skin color was, what their gender was, what their position in society was. Jesus treated them with value. He loved them. The obvious love for others poured out. And so if it was someone, a beggar in the street, whoever it was, it often says Jesus stopped and looked at them. He stopped and gave them his full attention. He stopped and reached out to them. He touched the leper who hadn't been touched. Treating people with value, the obvious love for others. You see Jesus engaging in the conversation and really listening to what's being communicated. And that filled with the Holy Spirit, he's able to discern what they're getting at. And then you see this, he speaks the truth in love. You know the people he's only really rude to are the religious people trying to trap him? Those who are out to get him? You see him in love, telling people the truth. And of course, people just flocked to, wanted to be around him. So not only were we made in the image and likeness of God, and we were created with these gifts to need laughter, to need joy in our life, We were created in a world where we were to take great pleasure in that. Jesus modeled it well for us. And then finally, he portrays what heaven's going to be like. And in portraying that, he says a couple of things. I'm go there to make a home for you, to prepare a place for you to come and be with me. Now, COVID has uh, a lot of us fearful that we aren't going to have some of the big family gatherings that we used to have. And this is a blip in time, and we'll get through this. Think back to the fun, crowded family table and the raucous laughter and the teasing and the enjoyment of food and family and friends. Can you guys just kind of smell it and taste it? I mean, we we just love it when all of our adult kids are home and they're sitting around and they're laughing about things they did and they're laughing about what happened and we're we're teasing each other. We're just having a, a grand time. Think about how much you long for that to happen. And Jesus says, I'm going to go and prepare a spot for you. I'm going to come back. And and, and when you come to be with me, we're going to eat together. We're going to feast together. I mean, if you just look ahead, look ahead to Revelation. The feasting, the celebration, the it, it's all right there. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Great food, laughter, celebration, joy. The image of finally being together and enjoying it. 
Isaiah 25, 6 explains it like this. The Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. And as he talks about what's to come when sin is dealt with, what he's preparing for us, he talks about this place where joy is what we would experience. Laughter, fun, fellowship, true, unhindered joy. Jesus understood this because he gave up his spot in heaven to come down and make a way for you and I to have our sins account, dealt with, paid for, washed away. And it says this in Hebrews. We look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It was like he knew. He knew what was possible. And he loved you. And he wanted you to experience that. And as Christians, we live with this completely different hope. This completely different mindset of what heaven will be when we get there. Let's ask the big question. So what? We put fun and fellowship in for followers. Can I just plead with you guys for a minute? If you don't do this well, begin to figure out how you can and start to have some fun. Now you go, fun in the middle of COVID? Fun when we can't get together? Figure it out. Go outside. Have a fire. But sometimes we're just apologetic. We don't think it's spiritual to laugh and to be filled with joy. But it is, it's a part of our walk. Followers know how to have fun. Now remember this, Jesus was without sin. And some of you have equated fun with doing stuff that isn't what you should be into. And so I want to give that disclaimer there. But we see the joy and the laughter and the friendship and the fun. Followers of Jesus learn to, they know, they develop that ability to have fun. They understand that laughter, joy, and fellowship are all gifts that God gives them. That they're reflections of the Father and what he's like. And when you practice life like this, it draws others in. It intrigues them. They begin to desire it. And they start to ask, how is it that you have joy in the middle of this world's worries? When you live intentionally like this, you reflect God's joy to the people he's placed in your life. You represent God's love as something that's transforming you and going from you to others. You understand how he made you and it says medically it's important to our health. But it builds our anticipation as we look beyond the here and now and are being reunited with Christ for eternity. If that intrigues you, there's a study in our booklet on follow. You can go a little deeper and a little further and answer some questions. But I'm going to end that part of the sermon here and say um, we get to do some fun and some celebration and be filled with joy because we have some baptisms today. I've picked a passage to start with. It's found in Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 7 says this, now the tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to him. They're talking about Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he had lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. 
Isn't that an awesome picture? And we see it with the prodigal son coming home, how the father just rejoices and throws a party and the lost has been found. Baptism, as we do it, immersion baptism, I just need to tell you at home or here, you might not understand our process. Let me just tell you what it, in, what it isn't and what it is. This is not a religious ritual. This is not baptism into the Christian and Missionary Alliance or this particular church. This is not a church tradition other than it's a biblical command and we follow it. And this is definitely not salvation. The Bible's really clear that you, you confess your sin, you accept what Jesus did, and then participate in baptism. Who can be baptized? Man, anyone who has accepted what God did on a cross for them. And some of you at home and some of you here have been holding off, thinking, well, I, I need to take some classes or I need to, to clean myself up or there's this little area of my life or, or maybe everybody will know. And let me just challenge you, if you haven't been baptized, it's time for you to just be obedient and get baptized. You don't have to wait. It's not biblical to wait it's biblical to be baptized. I mean, it's commanded in Scripture. This is what it is. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. This is an outward action of an internal reality where you go down under the water saying, I've been buried, I've died with Christ, my sins are gone and raised to new life in him. This symbolic thing I'm doing is a reality in my life. This is what Jesus did for me. It says in Colossians 2, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your faith, of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside nailing it to the cross. Today you're going to witness a baptism and here's what it'll do. In the spiritual realm, there's an announcement that says, I belong to Jesus. He's done this in my life. For fellow believers, they're pronouncing, it's my intention to walk with Jesus. You need to pray for me. You need to extend grace to me. You need to come alongside me. You need to walk with me and build into my life. All the one another's need to start to happen. For the world to see to say publicly, I am a follower of Jesus, and for you who get baptized, as a marker and a milepost to look back on. And when Satan comes with doubts and says, oh, that wasn't real, or that didn't, or, or did you really, you can point to today and say, yes, I did. Jesus touched my life, and I responded. So what we're going to do is I'm going to invite Chris to come and tell you the story of a week ago Wednesday, and then you're going to start to meet some people who are getting baptized this morning. Chris. Oh, there's a video first, sorry. Hi, I'm Charmaine Sharphead, and this is my testimony. Um, I used to be into alcohol and drugs and in gangs, and I used to be gay. But um, I, that all changed when I let God into my life. Um, it was in uh, the ERC. I decided to get a Bible from the chaplain, and I started reading. And it said on the, one of the verses to repent all your sins and you'll be saved. And so I got on my knees and I repented to the Lord. And the Lord came inside me like... um. Like he reached down inside of me and he took out all the pain and all the stress and all the, the 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 feelings I felt of like addiction and everything and like just made me <clears throat> feel the love of him and I never felt love for like that before in my life while I was praying I was crying on the knee my knees inside the jail <laughs> and um, he made me new again from there and um, I felt an over abundance of love that I never felt before like I wasn't scared anymore of, like I didn't have the feeling of fear from that moment on and um <clears throat> and then I decided to give my life to God and my world changed for the good 
I am with my kids now. I'm not in the gang no more. I don't drink. I don't do drugs anymore. Like he just took it all away. I'm not gay anymore. He just took it all away and changed me and my heart. And um, I uh, and I'm 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 very very thankful because we we're hiding from him and um, and we do and we always say we found he we found him. But like he really he has been there the whole time when we're hiding from him. So, you know, like open your guys' hearts to him and, and you'll see like a different change. He can change your life for the good and put you on a path that you're supposed to be on from the beginning when you were born. And um, I also want to uh, get, I wanted to get baptized even with, from when, when then he, all of a sudden I was looking through churches and I seen the Alliance Church and I just had to call, like he gave me a, a sign to call him. And I called and um, the pastor, Chris, was here and we set up this day to get baptized and everything and see just even on that god gave me his 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 church to come to to get baptized like he he's there in every single way and in, in every form and he's always watching us and we just need to quit hiding from him and open our hearts to him so we could make our journey through through jesus and um yeah that's my testimony Uh, so they're still getting changed. <laughs> they haven't come. They're uh, so we. I don't know. Have to. I guess I can tell my story. They know my side of the story. <laughs> we we were laughing about it this week. Uh, so um, Charmaine called on a Wednesday night, and uh, of course, most of you know. You know, we're not here at night. We're not waiting for people to call. <laughs> uh, but we have youth on Wednesday nights here, <clears throat> and this was a, a week and a half ago, and. Uh, I'm rarely behind my desk, my desk uh, during youth because uh, everything else is going on um, around this church. So I'm, I just, I get a few moments there while everyone's in small group, and I've cleaned everything up and gotten ready. Uh, and then uh, it was just, I, did, I just sat down, and the phone rang, and I just kind of thought, oh, that's probably a parent wondering what's happening or something. I don't know. Uh, uh, so I picked up the phone, and and Charmaine was was on the phone, and so. Uh, and she told me a little bit of her story, and I just invited her to come uh, the next day. And uh, she said her, her young son also was interested in getting baptized. So I can hear them coming up the stairs here. So right. you guys can come out here if you want. <laughs> They're trying not to uh, trip over stuff. Yeah, we made it. There's room. You Just maybe, I don't know if they can hear us if you want to. And so uh, Charmaine came, and she came with uh, Leland, her son, and her dad, Jerry, came. You guys can come on out here, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm telling stories about you, so you, maybe you want to come out here <laughs> and go like, it's not true, no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had a conversation, and uh, seriously, it was just, it, that day, I, I needed to hear uh, some good stuff, because it, it was the day that we just had a bunch of announcements that we were, you know, more restrictions. I was thinking, okay, next week youth is probably going to have to be on Zoom, um, which is, you know, it's doable, but it's just we're not together with the kids, and so that makes it really difficult um, for our youth ministry. And so uh, when Charmaine told me this, I was like, are, wow, are you kidding? Like, she's, she's in jail, and she just, she asked for a Bible, and God saves her, and I was just thinking of all the new restrictions. Oh, the gospel's going to be hindered. Oh man, what like all of the things are going through my mind, and then I get this story of Charmaine's transformation. I'm like, are you kidding me? The only part that we get to do, which is awesome, is we get to hear her story and uh, help her with her baptism. Like I'm just like, amazing. Is that is God not amazing? Is that not cool? <sighs> And so after after hearing her story, it was is is great. And so and so Jerry came too, and and uh, so Jerry started talking, and and uh, he was wondering about baptism as well. And and so we had that conversation. And so Jerry's like, "Well, I'd like to get baptized too. I think that's probably why I came." <laughs> and so Jerry's going to get baptized, and then Leland. So we had a conversation with Leland, and so I said, "Leland, why why would you like to get baptized?" And then Leland's a little bit shy, so but. Uh, he said, well, I love God, and I want to go to heaven. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> 
And so, uh, so yeah, we're getting a whole family baptized here. Almost little, the little one's not getting baptized, of course, not yet. Um, maybe someday soon, but she looks like she wants to go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> inadvertent baptism. Um, so I'm just going to kind of um, tell everybody how we're going to do this. I'm, I can't go in the tank with them, of course, with the social distancing. So what's going to happen is I'm just going to uh, stand up here and say the things that need to be said, and they're going to baptize themselves. And then when it gets to Leland, Charmaine is going to baptize her son. And so, super. This, this is, remember, at, I don't know, I, at the beginning of this service, I was like, hey, this is going to be a great service. So this is partly why. Uh, I'm so excited about this baptism. Uh, so thank you for calling us. It was so neat that you called us. Uh, you know, God just does amazing things like this. So, All right, so I'm just going to put my mask on here, and I'll invite you guys to come up here. I just want to pray for you. And specifically, I'm choosing a prayer from, uh, from, from the book of Colossians, Paul's prayer for the, for the Christians in Colossae. fall over stuff here. Okay, there, we're good, right? Uh, and so um, Paul begins this, this prayer when, he, when he's telling, to the, telling the Colossians, he said, for this reason, since the day we heard you about you, I've not stopped praying for you. And so this is, this, this is his prayer, and I want to pray it over you guys. I continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. And please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins." Father, I just pray that your hand would be on this family, that you would give them the perseverance, the strength, the courage they need to continue to seek after you and to love you. So Lord, uh, so excited about what is happening today, and I just pray a blessing on this family. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Jerry, uh, you're, you're first, so if, if you guys just want to maybe stand over here and we'll... We'll let the uh, camera view the baptism. We want the people at home to have this experience. Now, just to warn you, Jerry, I already have people in our church tend to yell and, and clap and do all sorts of fun things when there's a baptism, So just so it doesn't freak you out, right? <laughs> and if you're at home, you guys can do that too. And it's nice and warm in there, so... It's all good. It's like a hot tub. <laughs> well, after our conversation on uh, confession of, oh, hey, here we go. She's coming. She's going for it. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> She's not going to let Grandpa outdo her. All right, Jerry. Walter is your first name, right? But he goes by Jerry. So can I call you Jerry to baptize you? Or you want Walter? Gerald Walter La Rock. All right. Okay, Gerald Walter La Rock. Uh, upon confession of your faith, faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. All right. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Grandpa's coming. He's coming. He's coming. <laughs> yeah, she can go up there. I'll, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should have said it's freezing cold. <laughs> All right. Come on, Charmaine, if you want to come on up here. Lee, okay. Oh, there she's escaping, so. <laughs> Here comes Grandpa. He's gonna rescue you. Come on, Jerry. Just if you want, if you want to, just uh, yeah. There you go. 
All right, Charmaine, uh, you made my day last week, so uh, it's my privilege to be able to do this. And so uh, upon confession of your faith, uh, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right. Woo! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> All right, come on up, Leland. <clears throat> your mom gets to baptize you. She's so excited. And so because I'm the only one with the mic, I'll still do the, the baptizing stuff and she gets to do the good stuff, do the dunking. <laughs> it's, not, it's not no anymore, right? <laughs> All right. Is this exciting, Bella? Oh, yes. All right, Leland. <laughs> She's like, get on with it. <laughs> All right, Leland, on confession of your faith, your mom is going to baptize you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, guys. All right, our worship team is going to come up and lead us in some songs. 